Before the Airbus A380, Lockheed Martin had an idea for a double-decker super transport plane. An insane aircraft designed in 1996 that was bigger than a 747, carried more passengers than an A380, and would have dominated the skies. Let's explore this never-built aircraft. Hey, it's me, Nick here from Found and Explained. If you like this video, then consider subscribing today. Back in the early 90s, there was a problem with airports. Air travel was increasingly becoming popular and airlines were struggling to get enough airport landing slots for all of the demand. Some airports like Heathrow were utterly full and were selling landing slot pairs for millions of pounds. Cha-ching! Thus, if you could not increase the number of planes landing at airports, then it was time to make the planes bigger. Boeing had started the trend with the Boeing 747, and Airbus was following with the Airbus A340 series. Lockheed Martin, who had left the commercial aviation division after its L1011 trijet design, decided to think of the next logical step in aircraft evolution. They created a program called the Large Subsonic Transport, a series of designs for an aircraft that would be a natural evolution of the Boeing 747. This aircraft would solve the problem of limited airport capacity, but naturally fill rising demand in places like China, and also be the next military aircraft for the US Air Force, who had fleets of transport approaching retirement age. They targeted a passenger capacity of around 800 passengers for long-haul flights, as well as the possibility for it to be configured as a freighter aircraft. The design they came up with was this, officially called the Lockheed Very Large Aeroplane. It had a takeoff weight of 1.4 million pounds, or 635 metric tons, with four powerful engines. It had a wingspan of 282 feet, with folding wingtips, much like the Boeing 777X today, that brought it down to 211 feet of wingspan, around the same as a Boeing 747. This plane was also 262 feet long, making it one of the longest planes around in the world today. Needless to say, this aircraft would have dominated the airports around the world and required modifications to the runway and gates like the Airbus A380 would 10 years later. Let's talk about what it would have been like to fly. It would have carried around 900 passengers on board with a 450 split on each deck in a three-class cabin configuration. This aircraft was impressively wide, so passengers would have found themselves in a cabin around 17 seats across, or 3-4-3-4-3 configuration with four aisles. Today, the maximum that an aircraft has is around 10 seats across. Lockheed Martin also planned for a cargo version of the aircraft with intermodal containers. These are the same containers that are used on trains, boats and trucks, loaded successfully into a subsonic aircraft. The plane would have been able to hold 16 of them on the lower deck and still carry 450 passengers on the upper deck. Now, if this sounds very heavy, then you might be onto something. Let's talk about the aircraft's range and where it would fly. In the design document, the plane only had a range of 3,200 nautical miles, or 5,900 kilometers. This is shockingly small compared to the Boeing 747 with 7,730 nautical miles, or the Airbus A380 that could fly 8,000 nautical miles. Flights between London and New York, a distance of 3,008 nautical miles, would have been possible, but routes over the Pacific would have to land in Hawaii first. This would have made it unpopular for Asian airlines and those in the Middle East because it couldn't fly far enough. Lockheed Martin was optimistic, however, and believed that they would have a market for around 280 to 370 aircraft. For comparison, the Airbus A380 only sold 242 units, 38 less than the minimum number predicted for the Lockheed Martin Very Large Aeroplane. 
Each of these large aircraft would cost around 200 to 300 million US dollars in the 90s, which is around half a billion dollars in 2020. If all of this sounds fantastic, then why was it never built? Fascinatingly, for once, an aerospace firm showed hubris and the report Lockheed Martin admitted that it had neither the resources nor the know-how to build the plane. It suggested that it would have to partner up with Boeing and Airbus simultaneously to bring it to the market, for a total development cost of around 18 billion US. And there are also several other disadvantages to this design. First, it would be incredibly noisy during takeoff and landings. It would also create a considerable air vortex that would delay planes landing or taking off behind it. The aircraft would require all new gates to be built and new service vehicles to perform turnaround tasks. It would also take a long time to board for passengers trying to get to their seat. It was so heavy that it would crush most runways, and if it landed in the sea during an emergency, it would sink almost immediately. It was apparent that passengers would have a difficult time evacuating. If you were located in one of the middle seats in the middle aisles, then you were very far from the nearest exit, and it would likely not meet FAA evacuation guidelines. As the design was different from a standard aircraft, Lockheed Martin was not entirely sure how it would fly in the sky, nor how it would handle normal aircraft day-to-day -day flight operations. Alas, all of this proved to be too much for the company that had only recently moved out of commercial aviation and the project was shelved. And Lockheed Martin might have been right to do this. Airbus would go ahead to build the A380 and it would never really be that successful beyond its initial orders, and the world of super large aircraft came to a close. Today, point to point travel with ultra efficient aircraft are all the range, and the Lockheed Martin dream has become a vision of a forgotten future. Thanks for watching today. This is my favorite never built aircraft and I'm so excited to show everyone. I couldn't wait to sit down and build a 3D model for this program today and I think it really adds to the production. If you liked it, I would really appreciate a like down below and maybe even a comment of your thoughts on this design. And if you wanna see more never built aircraft, then click subscribe to stay tuned. Take care.